Hello, my friend. Welcome back to What's Up in Makeup. This week, we have lots of news for you, both in the top news segment and also the product report, starting off with BoxyCharm and how they want to tap into celebrity power in order to market their beauty subscription box. Then we're going to venture into Estee Lauder land. They're, I think they may just have too much money, and they're just trying to figure out, well, where do we want to spend our money? We got all this money. What do we want to buy? What do we want to make? And they're going in a very interesting direction that I want to share with you. And then in the product report, Danessa Myricks, wait till you see the palette that she is about to come out with. Oh my gosh. Hang tight. We're getting into it right now. All right, so we knew that things were going to change over BoxyCharm when Ipsy and BoxyCharm merged. I guess it was, what, about a year ago or so? So BoxyCharm is now going to start having celebrity ambassadors. It sounds like it's kind of like when they have the curated boxes over at Ipsy. I know Alicia Keys has done one. Uh, one of the Kardashians. Uh, I forget who else. Uh... Halsey did one at one point, lots of different celebrities. BoxyCharm has tapped into the power of euphoria and gotten Donnie Davey to be their chief makeup artist for fall of 2022. Donnie recently came out with a cosmetic company called Half Magic that really plays up on that euphoria, Gen Z graphic liner, sparkly bits kind of makeup look. According to the press release, she will serve as BoxyCharm's in-house expert and educator on all things beauty for the upcoming fall season. And she is the first chief makeup artist in their new seasonal program. So what does this mean for BoxyCharm subscribers? This is the info. There will be a Half Magic Beauty bundle starting September 12th. It's going to include a five-piece set valued at $88, and the bundle will be exclusive to BoxyCharm Charmers. To learn more about this partnership, you can go to BoxyCharm.com slash Chief MUA. And I do think that it's smart for BoxyCharm and Ipsy to use celebrities to kind of make their services seem more legit. I do, like I've said many times, feel like beauty boxes are on the way down and anything they can do to make them seem like they are exclusive or popular or you know backed by celebrities, I think that's super, super smart of them. So I wish them all the best. YSL has hired a new brand ambassador and it is Lil Nas X. And it's not just for traditionally male products, it's for their makeup line as well. The press release for this one said, with the ability to create and inspire change, YSL Beauty and Lil Nas X are elevating the cultural landscape, reaching new heights and challenging norms that have boxed in creatives for generations. Like, whoa, YSL, really? That's so freaking cool. As part of the deal for the campaign. He's going to be on all of their social channels promoting their products, including their newest lip launch, the Rouge Procateur, the Bold lip product, and also their men's fragrance, which is called Y. I was surprised, but not surprised to hear that Lil Nas X is actually going to be releasing a track specifically in collaboration with YSL. So I'm very curious what that's going to be like. I imagine it is going to be fabulous, but there's no release date as of the time that I'm filming of when that's going to come out, but I'm going to be keeping my eye out for it. I bet it's going to be great. It is most indie brands' dreams to be purchased by a larger company, but that always kind of evokes an emotion in me where it's kind of like, like, will the formulas change? Is it going to be different now? This one I don't have quite as an emotional attachment to, but it's always an another one bites the dust kind of feeling for me personally. So let me tell you what's going on. Amore Pacific announced on September 1st that they have entered into a definitive agreement to acquire the skincare brand Tata Harper. And if you're not familiar with them, they were kind of the original clean beauty brand, focusing on plant extracts and things like that to promote 
promote their products. This was back in 2010. Back, I don't even know how many years ago, but back a while ago, I did try some of their products and I really did enjoy them. The only thing I remember not liking about them was that they had a very strong fragrance, like they really had a strong scent. But I remember the texture was really nice and the ingredients at the time looked nice. But I honestly haven't tried any of their products in so many years. The article that I read did say that Tata Harper, who is of course the Tata Harper of Tata Harper, that she is going to continue working with the brand and leading the brand overall. If you are a fan of this brand, I would love to know what you think about this purchase. Are you excited about it? Do you think it's going to increase the reach for the brand, which might make innovation better or more or how overall, just how do you feel? On to Estee Lauder. So I feel like Estee Lauder just got too much money. <laughs> like we got, we got so much money. Like what are we going to invest in? They own so many freaking beauty brands. They own Aveda, Bobby Brown, Bumble and Bumble, Clinique, Dr. Jart, Glam Glow. And that's just up to the G's. I just cut it off there. I was like, that's enough, Jen. So many beauty brands. And a lot of them are doing very, very well. They own other brands as well, but those are like the makeup skincare focused ones. Last we heard from Estee Lauder, they were looking at possibly buying Tom Ford like they already have the contract for the Tom Ford beauty and fragrance stuff like they're already running that stuff but to buy the entire brand including the fashion piece but now maybe they're thinking about spending their money a different way and I'm hoping I say this right it's French and my French is not good but Belmont I think is how you pronounce it is who they're looking to work with next because Belmont does not have a beauty brand. So what it looks like they would do is they would develop makeup products for them. If you're not familiar with that company, I just know from social media stuff, I'm not a luxury fashion person, but they're very, very popular with the bougie bougies, with the Hermes crowd, with celebrities. Uh, it's a very popular luxury brand. So I personally feel like this is a great move for them to come out with a makeup company. And I think that Estee Lauder is poised to really do something great with it. We'll just have to see how it all shakes out. Will I buy any of the products when they come out? Nope, probably not because they're going to be above my price point. I'm just going to live vicariously through Michelle Wong. I'll be good with that. But not all is well in the land of business. And one of the brands being hit hard right now is Victoria's Secret. They've reported results for the second quarter ending on July 30th with net sales dropping 6% compared to the prior year period, hitting $1.521 billion below guidance, but operating income and earnings remained on target. So that's a good thing. At least their operating budget was the same, but it's their, their sales are just down. You know, I talked last week about my love for the song Victoria's Secret by the TikTok star Jax. It's so good. Does not make Victoria's Secret look very good. I think it was the same week Netflix released the Victoria's Secret documentary. Both the song and the documentary called out Victoria's Secret for encouraging body dysmorphia in kids and shady business practices and all kinds of stuff. So to me, I'm not shocked that people are buying the products less. In the press release about this, the chief executive officer, his name is Martin Waters, he commented on it. This is fascinating. As a company, we undertook and committed to not simply an evolution, but a revolution of our strategy. We aspired to and are proud to be a different company today with a new leadership team and a mission to welcome, celebrate, and champion all women. We've made much progress, but recognize this transformation is a journey and our work continues to become the victorious secret our customers and associates deserve, where everyone feels seen, respected, Expected and valued. I mean, it sounds 100% like damage control, which is like, what else are they going to do but damage control at this point to save their brand? So I, I feel like it was pretty well worded. There are some people that will never be happy with a statement from them, but it sounds like they're trying to correct the wrongs of the brand from the past. So we'll see how that goes. I would love to know your thoughts about this down in the comments. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about the manicure machine that is going into some Target stores as kind of a trial run. And a lot of you expressed concern about this replacing nail techs in the space. You know, if you can just go in and have a robot do it, then all these people that have trained for years, it's going to make them possibly lose jobs. And this, I think, has been a worry since the Industrial Revolution. <laughs> I mean, this has always been a thing 
where machines have started to take people's jobs. But I have to tell you today, the machines are coming for my job. There is a big push, at least according to this article that I read in Cosmetics Design, for virtual influencers. What does that mean, you may ask? It is a computer-generated influencer that can promote products. The article that I read in Cosmetic Design, this is a quote from it. They said, in recent times, particularly post-pandemic, beauty consumers were increasingly turning to online peers instead for advice as trust in the bigger personalities, the YouTube, you know, the influencer personalities waned. And I personally did see that where it seemed like people were trusting more of the Ulta and Sephora reviews instead of influencer reviews. Where this is all coming from is there is a trend forecasting website. It's called WGSN and the head of Insight, his name is Joe McDonald. He stated, looking back at traditional beauty social media activity, many consumers now consider these posts repetitive and of low quality. And I would love to know what you think of that. Do you find the influencer beauty space to be repetitive and low quality? Then he says, what we're seeing is this evolution of influence as a result. We're moving from a static influencer model to something much more dynamic, and Gen Z are leading this charge. He says that there is a shift away from influencers to creators, and this is where I part with him. This is where I feel like he's, he's not correct. He says, influencers focus on audience and brand deals, and creators are about the content and their fans. I feel like there have always been influencers and creators and I think that the only difference between a creator and an influencer is whether you're getting paid or not and I do think that some influencers like on myself do care very much about the content we create and about the people that watch what we do while we were also making money I feel like this is an extremely shallow point of view but he says that this perception of this is what's pushing the virtual influencers which I think is also very contradictory one of the virtual influencers, her name is Lil Michaela, and she's modeled for Prada. Supposedly, she went to Coachella, which I don't really get, but she has over 3 million followers on Instagram. But this is what I don't understand is how can someone watching a beauty video get emotionally attached to a virtual person? Like, how are they going to trust someone that doesn't even have independent thought? And this brought me to a video that I watched last week, and I know I'm kind of rambling about this, but I'm very passionate about it. Samantha Ravindall, if you have not seen her latest video on why she doesn't like short form content like TikTok, highly, highly recommend. It is a fantastic video. And she basically says, you cannot get attached as easily to TikTok influencers because the videos go by so fast and you can't follow a progression of who this person is. You can't learn about who this person is through such short form content. And that's why she likes YouTube better because because you can actually tell a story about your life and what's going on and people can get attached to you as a person and that really builds that community where you can't really build that on TikTok. It's so fast. But I am absolutely fascinated by this topic and especially I really want to know what you all think about this because I bet you're going to have some very interesting perspectives. Let's start with the product report. With the product that I am most excited about, Oh my gosh, I saw this and I died. I was like, oh my gosh. This is the Lightwork Volume 4 Transcendence Palette by Danessa Myricks. It is launching September 13th. There are eight velvet chromes, two glass metallics, two pressed chrome flakes, and two aqua chromes. I don't know what any of that is, but it's gorgeous. <laughs> this is the kicker though. It's $125. So it's like, do I need this? No. Do I want this? Yes, I absolutely do. But it's $125. And I just spend a lot of money on dental work. <laughs> it's like, do I really? I don't know if I'm going to get this, to be honest. I don't know. Maybe. It's definitely a possibility because it looks incredible. But one thing I am getting that I am going to get to show you because they are sending to me in PR, this is the Kaleidos, the Night of Creation collection. It's coming on September 14th. There's two quad palettes, six color shifting gel liners, and they are all housed in a Night of Creation display. I cannot wait to get my fingers in them. I cannot wait to try out the six color shifting gel liners. I am so into like a colored foiled, like iridescent kind of liner 
right now. This is right up my alley. Another interesting product from an indie brand. This is Cara Beauty, the magazine collection volume two. There's Dare to be Shocking, Blur the Lines, and Limitless Beauty. Have you ever tried Cara Beauty? I've never tried their products. I don't know if they're good or not, but I do love the packaging on this. So excited for Betty Jean. We have the Batty Bean and Shroud Part 2 collab palette. This is called Halloween. <laughs> it's so cute. She did such a nice job. Her vision for the palette was Halloween, but make it grunge. It's so cute. So bold, so bright. Definitely a market for this. I know her last collab with Shroud sold out so quickly, so I'm really hoping this one does well for her as well. Congratulations, Betty Jean. Great job. It does launch on September 6th. Moving over to Sephora, two products that were sneaked ahead of time that have now landed. So this is the Patrick Ta Major Skin Creme Foundation and Finishing Powder Duo. $52, 24 duos. They say it is a blendable medium coverage cream foundation paired with a satiny finish powder. My question is, is the powder gonna get into the cream? Because a lot of times when these products come out, they have like a little door that protects the cream from getting powder in it because if the powder gets in it, it's gonna get chunky and weird. So very curious how this is going to end up working out. Along with that, he's releasing a dual and a complexion brush to go with it, $45. There's one side that's for the cream, one side that's for the powder. I like the little pointy tip, it's different. It's different, hopefully it works just as well as I think that it'll work, because it looks like a nice brush. Bunch of products listed as coming soon on the Sephora website, including two lip liner products from Give by Gwen Stefani. The first one is the Pout to Get Real Clean Overlining Lip Liner. Two shades, there's a bright pink and then there's like a light nude shade, $22, it's coming September 6th. And then there's the Anaheim Line Clean Waterproof Lip Liner, $20, that one comes in three shades, still sticking with the nudie and pink shades. They say it's a high precision waterproof lip liner that prevents lip color from bleeding or feathering. Tower 28 has a new mascara coming. This is the Make Waves Lengthening and Curling Clean Mascara, $20. Available on the Sephora app on September 6th and everywhere else on September 7th. They say it lengthens, defines, and holds a curl with Aquaflex technology, whatever that is, <laughs> for an amped up natural looking lashes. And I read now natural looking and I was like, okay, I'm out. Anytime a mascara advertises itself as natural looking, I know that it's not going to be for me because <laughs> I have little short wimpy lashes that need like fake lashes to be on camera. So that one's, that one's going to be a no for me. This one though, maybe a yes for me. This is the Milk Makeup F Future Fluid All Over Medium Coverage Hydrating Concealer, $29, 30 shades. Looks like a really nice gradient there. They say it's a medium to full coverage concealer that covers, sculpts, and hydrates for a lightweight, crease-proof, natural finish. I was looking at it and I was like, is that a sample size because it's so squat? I was, it didn't look like a full size, but it actually is. There's actually more product in this than there is in the NARS concealers, which I find absolutely fascinating. The way that our visuals, that whole kindergarten trick about pouring the water into the different jugs, that's what's happening here with the milk makeup for me. I'm actually interested in this product though. I bet you it's really good. Another product that I'm interested in, I haven't tried anything from House Labs since they rebranded. This might be it. This is the Triclone Skin Tech Medium Coverage Foundation with Fermented Arnica, $45 each. Another very nice gradient of shades. There's 51 shades, that's a lot. There's also a white shade, which I thought was interesting. Interesting choice. It's coming September 8th. They say it's medium coverage, weightless, and they claim it reduces redness, helps even skin tone, and protects from environmental stress. Environmental stress, that was the thing we were all freaking out over because they were using that there the fact that there was antioxidants in it to say that it would protect you from this mystery blue light damage that we're all supposedly getting from our screens that's like so minimal, it's not even a thing. So I'm so glad that they didn't say blue light protection and because they didn't and go with that fake blue light marketing, I may actually get this because well done. They're also coming out with a powder. It's called the Bio Blurring Talc Free Loose Setting Powder. It comes in five shades, $38. They say it's a skincare infused loose powder that blurs imperfections, smooth skin, and optimizes makeup performance. I'd be curious to know from someone that's a, like a skincare professional whether there can be skincare in a powder that can actually do anything for your skin other than just sit on top, maybe absorb oil, something like that. 
I don't, I don't really get the whole skincare and a powder product thing, but maybe I just don't understand. I don't know. But what I do understand about this product is it has a mesh filter on the top, which I love. Absolutely love. There's a product later that has no filter and it's like, what, what, what is happening? We'll talk about it in a second. Before we get there, Sephora and Ulta, there's one product that just launched that's at both places and it's the Too Faced Pumpkin Collection for 2022. There's the Pumpkin Spice Second Slice Sweet and Spicy Eyeshadow Palette, $54. It looks like a boring cousin of last year's. Last year's was so cute and it was actually a really good palette. I'll put both of them up on the screen so you can compare. I mean, the shades, there's so many shades in here that look like they're almost dupes for each other which you know disappointed but not surprised kind of situation they also have the melted matte psl liquid lipstick 26 dollars, and they do say that it does have a pumpkin spice scent of course moving over to ulta i saw some buzz about this online people excited about this two new eyeshadow palettes from Tarte. The first one is the Man Eater After Dark Eyeshadow Palette, $52. They say it is the largest, fiercest Man Eater palette yet with 24 new everyday shades with a holiday flair. I will say I love the leopard print. I think that's super cute, very smart, but boring ass color story again. I mean, that's the Man Eater theme is like these warm, natural colors. But again, it's like there's so many shades in here that look like they, they could be, there's like two of them in there almost. There's so close like on the swatch they're probably different but on the eye they're probably gonna look exactly the same as same like why not throw some greens in here or some purples or something you know the second palette they're launching i'm actually more excited about this is the man eater vanity palette it's a really nice variation of shades i love that it comes with the mini man eater mascara that's actually a really good mascara if i remember correctly it's 32 dollars. i mean it is a natural palette it's been done a thousand times but if you're looking for a gift this is a nice little gift I know some of you are going to be very excited about this. I personally was a huge Tweety Bird fan back in the day. I had a Tweety Bird watch. I am so glad though I never got a Tweety Bird tattoo. I thought about it and it didn't happen and I am so freaking thankful that I was poor. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a lot less commitment in the iHeart Revolution and Looney Tunes collection. So huge collection, four nine pan eyeshadow palettes, a highlighter palette, three lip oils. Each one has a different character on it. There is a carrot brush set, a cosmetic bag, and a sponge set. Prices range from $8 to $20. It really does look cute. But again, we're talking about revolution here. And chances are the quality is going to be relatively mediocre in my opinion, therefore I am not purchasing. Milani though is really good at their color correction, concealer kinds of products in my opinion. So I'm excited about these. This is the Milani Conceal and Perfect Facelift Collection. There's three different products that are available. They're $10.99 each and each formula does come in four different shades. So we have the under eye brightener, the liquid highlighter and the liquid contour. And if I don't get these in PR, I will probably try one each of these because because they look really nice. Stepping into bougie land for just a second, we have the Chanel Noir Allure Mascara, $42. They say volume length, curl, and definition. The packaging features the iconic Chanel click mechanism. I don't know what that is because I don't own anything like that. But if you do, you know what that is. But they say that it turns the mascara into an object of desire. I'm like so curious now. Does it vibrate? Is that what's happening here? But if it does vibrate, I don't think that's a good choice. I think that's a bad choice. <laughs> All right, let's go into safer, safer products. Stop it, Jen. Stop it. All right, Live Tinted. Hue Beam Blushing Bronzer. Really pretty. $38. It's one blush, two bronzers in like one gradient shade. Really pretty. They said that it is thoughtfully crafted to flatter every complexion. Looks like a nice product. Next up, we have the Hue Gloss from Live Tinted. Two shades, $20 each. Also, they say it's universally flattering, hydrates and nourishes lips, lighting a beautiful, non-sticky, reflective glow. I've never tried anything from Live Tinted. That stuff is really freaking cute. REM Beauty, three products that are new to Ulta this week. The Space Shape Brow Gel, $20. Gives brows a full, natural-looking laminated effect with a firm, flexible, long-lasting hold. I love this about this. I think this is so smart. There's a squish Squishy side, squishy side. There's a squishy side, and then there's a little, little brushy thing on the other side for the laminated brow effect. I think that's so freaking smart. Very, very well done there. 
They also launched the Midnight Shadows Multi-Use Eye Stick, $18, eight shades, three in one product is what they say. It highlights the brow bone, defines and contours the brow line, and works as an all over eyeshadow. Very nice. And then finally from REM, we have the Space Shape Brow Pencil, $18, does come in 12 shades. Love that they came out with a lot of shades. It's a twist up cream to powder formula. It draws natural looking brows with hair like strokes. They say it's buildable, medium to full coverage, long lasting, smudge proof, fade resistant, all the things we want in a brow pencil. They say it also includes a built-in sharpener and a spoolie, which is always nice. And then finally in the product report, three products from Nabla. We have the Brow Ambition Eyebrow Pen. $20, four shades, long lasting eyebrow pen with an ultra fine brush tip for easily creating highly precise hair like strokes. I looked at the pictures of the models on here and I was like, I don't want my brows to look like that. It's just not my jam. That's not my jam. It looks really good on some people, does not look good on me. They also launched the Close Up Baking and Setting Powder, $22 there, a translucent loose setting powder with a soft matte finish. This is the one with no filter. Why don't you put some kind of filter on it? Or maybe they took the filter off for the photo. I don't know, but I, that just screams to me, it's gonna be a mess and it's gonna be everywhere. And finally, this though, this though, this is the Angel Aura Face Serum Primer, $30. They say it gives a radiant finish and creates a plumped and lifted result. Gorgeous packaging, totally giving me Farsali vibes. This is pretty, this is real pretty. Do I need it? No, but the packaging's real, real pretty. All right, PR purchase product of the week, my friend. I got it in the mail and I'm so excited. You know, okay, if you do not know, I am a huge Alice in Wonderland fan. I'm such an Alice in Wonderland fan that I named my marshmallow company Mad Marshmallows after the Mad Hatter because I freaking love Alice in Wonderland. And one of my favorite makeup brands with some of the most wonderful people over there sent this to me over in PR. This is the Alice in Wonderland Sigma Collection. <laughs> I'm wearing it on my eyes today. I got a little carried away with the lower lash line. I don't usually do this dark of a Lower lash line but I was having too much fun and I just I was having fun so this is the palette today I used this shade uh, which was really nice this like mustardy shade and then I use that up in the crease and then I kind of blew out the outer corner with this shade here and then on my lid I used the shade tea party and, and then also white rabbit here my lower lash line I did the shade lost and then in the middle I put which one this one here wonderland and then this one here called Alice and so far so good man it's working great I mean it's the way that Sigma palettes normally are I, on my face I have the two cheek products the blush is what I have on here and then the highlight so so incredibly gorgeous on my lips I have just this by itself it's one of their lip creams it's kind of like a cross between a liquid lipstick and a lip gloss it's comfortable like a gloss but it's pigmented like a lipstick and then wait so you see these brushes my friend oh, oh my gosh they picked the best brushes for this collection this is the multitasker brush that I've been talking about that is freaking phenomenal. If you saw my five minute makeup challenge, this is the brush. This is the brush that puts your foundation on so freaking fast. It is fabulous. I also really love this one. This is a great product for a highly pigmented cheek product that you just want to put on really, really lightly. And then perfect, perfect collection of eye brushes here that are great to just put on any look. And then of course the eyeshadow palette does come with two brushes as well. It comes with a dual sided brush that are Sigma brushes but not like cheap brushes. So yes, so far so good on the Alice in Wonderland collection. I am not disappointed at all. Did I show you the bag? The bag is so pretty. It's so sparkly. It's rough though. So if you don't like rough, you're not gonna like this, but I don't have like glare coming off of my hands, which is definitely a positive. If you are interested in this collection, it is available September 8th at sigmabeauty.com. All right, notable sales of the week. We have e.l.f. 60% off select items for Beauty Squad members. It's just their loyalty program. If you're not a member, you'll get 30% off. Over at Beauty Bay Labor Day sale, it's a progressive sale, so you get 20% off if you spend $85 or 25% off when you spend $120. You're gonna use code SAVE20 or SAVE25, whichever one you're doing at checkout to get the deal. And then over at Sigma, 40% off for the So Long Summer Sale. There are exclusions to this though. So if you wanted to get that multitasker brush but you didn't want to get like the whole brush set this would be a great time to get it and then finally over at ColourPop get flawless for fall sale 30% off site-wide and finally my friend our artist shout out on the week oh my gosh wait till you see her wait till you see her her name is Danielle Nicole <gasps> oh my gosh she's amazing let's talk about this first look this is her avatar look it looks like she stepped right out of the movie doesn't it doesn't it look like she's right out of the movie the symmetry the symmetry of the line work is so 
perfect. Like her forehead, it's just incredible. The shading, perfection. And I love, this is what I love. I love the slight hint of blush on her cheeks. I feel like it just pulls everything together. Let's go ahead and look over at the second look. And this is called Floral Print On You Hose. <laughs> <laughs> and I really wanted to highlight Danielle's adornment work. She's really good with adornments. And I cannot even imagine how long it took to do this and how frustrating this process must be to get all of those little things in the right place and not crushing the flowers. And she just positioned them perfectly. It must be just maddening. I could never. I do not have the patience for something like this. Like, not at all. She crushes it, though. She absolutely crushes it. I also love the juicy purple lip. Hint of ombre. Very, very well done. Third look, final look. This is called Just a Little Bit of Money Green. And I wanted to choose this one because it's just pretty and it's beautiful. It doesn't have to be super special effects to show off talent. And I feel like that's what this look is, is it really shows her talent without being in any way over the top. I love the way she faded the green on the outer corner of her eye. She chose the perfect lashes that complement this look and the crystals. They're just placed so perfectly. And of course, I have to shout out to the peach lip compliments the green in such a beautiful way. I know I've found somebody really good when I just lose myself in scrolling the looks. And one thing that's great about her account is it's not just looks. She's got a fantastic vibe. If you watch the videos, she's very funny. She does a lot of lip syncing, but funny lip syncing. It's entertaining. It's not just about the art. It's about her personality as well. She just seems like a lovely human. And I'm so excited to see what she does next. I just followed her. I highly recommend you go check out her Instagram. I'll link it down below for you. And that, my friend, was What's Up in Makeup this week. Thank you so, so much for watching. And thank you, as always, to the What's Up in Makeup Facebook hunters. Their names are scrolling below me. Thank you so much for all of your submissions this week, making sure I didn't miss anything. I appreciate you oh so very much. Our chat today is going to be at 5 p.m. Eastern time. I'm just warning you, I'm probably going to be very tired Saturday. I have an all-day tonight wedding to go to. It's about an hour from me, uh, so I'm going to be up late. And then I have a market early in the morning and then I'm going to get home, be able to maybe take an hour nap before chat. I'm probably going to be very tired, but we're showing up, we're doing the thing, and we're going to have a great chat. So hopefully you can join us. But if for some reason you can't because you got stuff going on, it is so great to listen to like a podcast on the replay. It's very easy to find if you're subscribed. Just go to your subscription feed. It should be right there. But if you're not subscribed, you can also find it by going to my channel page, clicking on my videos, and then clicking on the video titled live chat. Thank you so, so much for watching What's Been Makeup This Week. I really appreciate you. If you would like to hang out just a little bit longer, YouTube should be recommending a couple of videos for you right over here to watch. But if it is your time to go, it is no problem at all. Thank you so much for hanging out as long as you did. And mad love to you. And I'll see you in a video very, very soon. Bye.